Scientists in South Africa are warning against a new coronavirus variant of extreme concern. They Scientists in South Africa are warning against a new coronavirus variant of extreme concern. They fear it could be more infectious than Delta and more resistant to vaccines. The new variant has already surfaced in neighbouring Botswana, Hong Kong and Israel. Several governments, including Germany's, are banning travel from South Africa and other Southern African states. The World Health Organisation has called a meeting of experts in Geneva to assess the threat. At first, health officials thought they were seeing a small cluster of outbreaks in South Africa's most populous province. But after examining specimens, they realized they were dealing with something far more serious, a new variant that could be the hardest yet to contain. This is a very concerning because of a combination of factors that it emerged so quickly and has basically spread across South Africa, displacing Delta, which we so we know has been king of all variants so far for the last half year. Officials are worried that the new variant, known simply as B11529, could quickly spread through the country and beyond. Only about 35% of adults in South Africa are fully vaccinated, and the rate of vaccination has slowed. And given the findings so far, even current vaccines may not be enough to stop it. Of course, we are saying that from the experience of the last 21 months or so, we almost can predict how this is going to move. As I've said, especially when like the Delta is starting in Gauteng, you can be rest assured as people start to move even more over the next few weeks, this will be all over. The UK has announced a ban on flights from South Africa and five neighboring countries as cases of the new variant have already appeared in Botswana and in Hong Kong. No matter where the variant started, it could quickly become a global problem. For more, I'm joined by Dr. Ulrich Elling. He's research group leader at the Institute of Molecular Biotechnology in Vienna. Dr. Elling, welcome to DW. Your laboratory uh, is sequencing the virus and detecting the variants. What's the biggest concern with this new variant? It's really two different data sets that we have at the moment. It is early days, as you're pointing out. Um, the one is that we have uh, we are facing an explosion of cases of SARS-CoV-2 uh, infections in South Africa, and we are we are finding that exactly in the region of Johannesburg, where this variant is detected. So the so we've seen a uh, hundred times more cases yesterday than just uh, 25 days before on the first of November, and um, this correlates with the fact that exactly in this region we are detecting this new variant. And this variant has a staggering number of 32 mutations in the spike protein alone. And um, it's not just any mutations, it's exactly those mutations that have been studied in multiple laboratories around the world before and that are known to increase infectivity as well as immune escape. So the prediction from this mutation pattern would indeed be that this is much more infectious and evading our vaccination efforts. Um, these data are still missing. Um, but, you know, if you count one and one together, then it is highly possible that the, what we are observing in South Africa at the moment is due to the variant. Right. So much uh, faster spreading. We hear now that there are already cases detected in Hong Kong and Israel as well. How fast is it spreading internationally? So at the moment, the first estimates are that this might be 500% more infectious than Delta. Please remember that Delta was about 60% more infectious than uh, Alpha. So the spread that we will see around the globe is going to be much faster than we saw it for Delta. And with the R value that first predictions calculate, it might in fact be almost impossible to contain this even with a lockdown. So our only chance really is to stop it at borders, which means we have to act now internationally and, you know, completely. Mm -hmm. So we have to basically stop flights out of the southern part of Africa mm -hmm. and contain it within Hong Kong and Israel, where it appeared apparently already landed. So we think it's already uh, the vaccines that we currently have are not as effective with this new variant. But what, we, what level of illness are we seeing? Are you seeing the same level of sickness in, in the people that are contracting this variant? 
Yeah, that is exactly the other important data set that we are still lacking. We don't know how ill people get in this region of South Africa right now. I'm sure these data will come in with the next days. But this is the two parameters we need to know. How ill do people get and do the vaccines work, so the lab data. Um, then we know for sure, mm -hmm. but we won't have this data um, fast enough to act then. Um, we would have to act now and wait for the data. Certainly a concerning development. All right, Dr. Ulrich Erling from the Institute of Molecular Biotechnology in Vienna, thanks very much for your time. Thank you. And now for some reactions. I'm joined by DW correspondents Marina Strauss in Brussels and Adrian Kreisch in Cape Town. Marina, what is the European Union planning to do to try to stop the spread of this variant? The European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen just sent out a tweet this morning and said the European Commission, so the EU's executive arm, will propose to activate the so-called emergency break that will allow to stop air travel from the southern African region. So the emergency break is a mechanism that was introduced by the EU during the coronavirus pandemic and it helps EU member states to act quickly in restricting travel from certain regions. Now it's EU states themselves who have to decide if they want to do that or not. Um, this is not a legally binding mechanism, but some EU member states have already reacted. For example, Austria, the Netherlands and also Italy said they will restrict travel from the southern African region, from South Africa to their countries. And also German health minister Jens Spahn talked to the press this morning and said he is very worried about this new variant and Germany will also restrict flights from South Africa to Germany. They will only allow German citizens in and also these German citizens will have to self-isolate and it's likely that other EU states will follow suit. Adrian, what's the reaction been in South Africa to this new variant? The South African government already said that it feels it is a rush decision that is rather unfortunate and obviously they have the economic impact in mind. For many here in South Africa it's a déjà vu of sorts to what had happened about a year ago. Back then the beta variant was discovered here in South Africa and although that doesn't mean it originates in South Africa, same with the current variant by the way, it had devastating consequences for the economy. South Africans were banned for many months to, to visit a lot of countries that imposed travel restrictions and also the tourist arrivals here went mm. down. So that was a disaster for the economy and it is likely to happen now once again if the same scenario is happening. And I just talked to some traders uh, here in the city who are selling souvenirs. They are devastated. One uh, gentleman told me if there's no tourists here, that means for them basically there's no food on the table for the kids. It's just the beginning of the summer of the tourist season here and that is a disaster for South Africa. The pandemic has made an unemployment crisis and a poverty crisis even worse, worse and uh, yet again no end in sight. No end in sight. A really lose-lose situation there. All right. Thank you. Marina Strauss in Brussels and Adrian Kreisch in Cape Town. Thanks to you both. And let's bring in Wolfgang Peiser now. He's the head of the Division of Medical Virology at Stellenbosch University. Um, what's the big concern about this new variant? Help us understand. Well, this B11529 has a high number of mutations. And even though one has to stress that at this stage, we don't really have evidence, neither from looking at patients and, and what the virus does in the field, nor from studies in the lab, as to what these mutants and mutations do, we, we can sort of predict because some of them we know from other variants and therefore there is the concern that this virus may evade the immune system. That means it can infect people who've been infected before and recovered and it may also infect people who have been vaccinated successfully. And it also seems to be quite transmissible. But, you know, it's very early days, so we are studying this very uh, actively at the moment. Uh, a lot of, of uh, predictions are really based on, on the mutation pattern that we see. Okay, so early days, but is it too early to say how fast it's spreading in South Africa? Is it faster than other ones? Yeah, it has definitely caused the outbreak in Gauteng and we fear that this is the beginning of our own fourth wave. And judging from the experience uh, with the beta variant, which uh, emerged here in South Africa uh, about a year ago, and then subsequently the Delta variant, which was imported and then also spread very quickly, one can sort of predict what, what's going to happen. So we are watching it very closely. And 
Um, I'm now here in the in the Cape in an area where we haven't seen these cases yet, uh, but already samples that we tested this week are showing a particular pattern on, on one of the diagnostic tests that suggests that they could also be the new variant. I have to say, though, that uh, at the moment we we are not uh, we, we've left our third wave, and therefore the virus is not competing against anything else. So we are not saying that it is stronger or more easily transmitted than the Delta variant, which is bad enough, of course, because there isn't currently a lot of Delta around anymore. Uh, but mm. that we are seeing a new virus spreading apparently fast. Um, is of course of great concern and we are watching it very closely. Well, I can understand your, your caution in, in, in coming to a conclusion, but how about this? Vaccination rates are lower in South Africa than in many more yep. wealthy nations. Would we even be in this situation if vaccines had been more equitably distributed around the globe? Well, South Africa is probably an exception as far as Africa goes in that we have had now for several weeks enough vaccine to uh, vaccinate the whole adult population. Um, our problem is, and that is very much like in Germany and many other countries, is vaccine hesitancy. So people are not coming forward uh, enough, uh, even though vaccine is available. That may be totally different in other African countries where, where really there isn't enough vaccine to go around. But we are actually facing another problem here. On the other hand, we know that a large proportion of our population has become infected in uh, some of the previous waves. And, and therefore, we, we were under the expectation that that would also provide some protection from the fourth wave. And we will be watching it very closely to see whether it plays out like that or whether the new B11529, which I expect will get a proper name very soon, um, whether that variant um, will overcome uh, the immune response. Okay, virologist Wolfgang Preiser at Stellenbosch University. Thanks for that. Thank you. And for more now, I'm joined by DW political correspondent Hans Brandt. And Hans, what more can you tell us about what the German government is doing? Well, the German health minister Jens Spahn is currently uh, informing the public behind me in this press conference center about what Germany is going to do about uh, both this new variant and the COVID or the um, the COVID uh, pandemic in general. Uh, just recently, by Twitter, the health minister announced that by tonight. From tonight onwards, flights to South Africa from Germany will be suspended as a result of this new variant that has been discovered in South Africa. Um, that is also a rule that is being applied uh, most likely in all European Union countries, and several of them have already uh, imposed such restrictions. Uh, Jens Spahn, the German health minister, referred to the fact that Germany itself uh, is uh, struggling at the moment to contain the pandemic um, because of rising uh, numbers of uh, infections in recent uh, weeks and because of the rising number of hospitalizations and he said the last thing we need at the moment is another variant that will disrupt the situation that is already very difficult to keep under control. And that was DW political correspondent Hans Brandt reporting just outside of the press conference where Germany's health minister is announcing the new steps. Let's take a look now at some of the other developments in the pandemic. Here in Germany, new infections have reached another record daily high. More than 76,000 cases were registered over 24 hours. Portugal is tightening restrictions to combat a new surge in cases, a concern in a country with one of the world's highest vaccination rates. And the Philippines plans to reopen its borders to some tourists on a trial basis from the 1st of December.